guys and welcome to Watching Time. Today I'm going to review a watch that it's produced in Italy, uh, in this case with a Swiss uh, automatic movement, uh, from a micro brand that was born a couple of years ago uh, that's called Meccanica Veneziane. So uh, just a little bit about the brand, Meccanica Veneziane was born uh, a couple of years ago, uh, as I said, uh, in Kickstarter mainly, launching uh, new model watches uh, that were actually a match of other watches uh, uh, that were inspired, let's say, in colors and materials on some Italian cities, etc. So I think in Kickstarter they had a lot of popularity and a lot of likes and people were buying their designs. And it's actually, you know, a, it's a nice watch at the end. It's Italian. Uh, but obviously it's not Italian produced or neither Swiss made at this point. So I'm just going to, to review a little bit about it. I, I got this one in Kickstarter. It was around uh, almost free. <laughs> I think the Kickstarter campaign was actually in 2017 and I got it in 2018. So uh, if, if I'm correct or yes, I, I think it, no, or the other way around. It was 2018 and I got it in 2000. It was early 2019. So the watch, uh, the watch presents itself uh, nice in terms of aspect and colors. This is the Nereide, Nereide GMT, as they call it. And, and it came uh, either with a leather bra, uh, strap or you could add also the Jubilee. In this case, I added the Jubilee. The leather straps are uh, made in Italy leather, uh, handmade. It's actually good quality. Uh, this one I have never wear, never. So uh, this is, uh, it's as good as I got it on the box. Eh? The box was a very big wooden box. Uh, I don't have it around here right now, but but it's, it's a big, just wooden box. Uh, I don't like boxes. <laughs> I rather watches have small boxes, uh, having a big chunk of wood uh, for a brand. It doesn't give me any quality feeling or, you know, or premium on the on the watch. I rather have at that point something that's eco friendly or whatever. Uh, anyway, it's very big. So at the end, I, I think I just put it on the rubbish. Uh, anyway, the the strap, this is, as I was telling you, I have never wear it. So it's, it's new. It was on, on my straps uh, case. Uh, spare straps uh, and the thing that you can notice here actually it's that first of all you have a point of cleavage here where probably it was uh, because the watch actually came with the with the strap and 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 the leather in that point it feels much more fragile than the rest of it uh, i don't know why but it's the feeling that it gives you in the hand like like if it's you know, like it will have the tendency to break, which is not. Uh, but anyway, uh, you have it there. If I try to stretch it mm, as max as possible, you still see that the leather at the end of the day is a good quality. You are not going to see any creases or imperfections that are quite uh, evident. Uh, the borders, the borders, uh, you know, this is uh, the color of this watch is a little bit of a cognac. Uh, kind of brown uh, but if you see the borders the the paint that they have used and I if I remember correctly when I got the watch it was not like this it has become more yellow more mustard so uh, it has actually changed color and 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 you can see the difference uh, I, I which I don't think it's nice at the end of the day I would rather have had a contrast the same color or the same tone or the material that they have used, it just has deteriorated over time and changed color by itself. Uh, obviously, this was not exposed to UV light, so it was on a draw, on a box. So uh, that's why I found it weird. Anyway, let's go to the watch. So uh, I spoke, spoken already for minutes on, on nothing, mostly. <laughs> so anyway, the, the watch, here you have it. Uh, it's nice, stainless steel with a nice uh, Jubilee bracelet. The bracelet is not bad. I'm going to show it to you uh, better uh, when I open it up. The case is full stainless steel with straight lines, straight cuts. As you can see also the lugs here, 
they come down. Uh, obviously, it's a pretty clear homage of other uh, diver watchers uh, that you will find around from other brands, uh, particularly when you have this kind of Pepsi in a GMT. Uh, you definitely have in mind other type of watches. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's okay sometimes to have a watch that looks similar to other ones. So in this particular case, uh, the inside, as you can see, it has a dial that it's uh, black, but it, it has been, uh, it's totally black with golden uh, uh, words, but also the markers are golden in color. The logo of Meccaniche Veneziane, we can discuss a lot about it because it looks a lot like another famous brand logo. But uh, anyway, that's okay. It's not like you can have the property of, 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 of all the logos that are inspired by other things. Uh, the GMT hand is actually red. Yeah, I will show it to you better here. If we, it's, this is a screw down crown. Uh, the screw down crown works okay, nothing. If I screw it down, and get it out of this. So here you can see that the hand is actually red. It's a nice red color. It's actually pretty well done. Uh, I have seen uh, bigger and more famous brands uh, getting wrong the paint on the GMT hands. So this is pretty well done at the end. Uh, the quality is not bad. And I was actually quite happy when I got it the first time because uh, overall it presents itself as a good watch. The aluminum bezel, uh, the colors, the golden inside, the, the stainless steel use, how the crown works, uh, the clasp, ah, it's rubbish. <laughs> so the clasp in this, in this strap is actually rubbish. It's just rubbish. Uh, it's probably the, the thing that I hate the most of the, of the whole watch. Uh, just this very cheap Chinese kind of uh, stamp uh, steel uh, strap. It closed okay, I don't have anything to say on that. And with the secure here, that's okay. You have the cross here again of the logo of Meccanica Veneziane. And, and then you have the masterpiece inside with, uh, at the start it was going to be Anita, but then they, they had to modify because they said they had some problems with the furniture uh, of this mechanism. So, uh, if I remember correctly, they ended up using uh, a Celita, but that's okay. It's still, you know, a, a Swiss movement uh, of good quality. Uh, and actually the movement works pretty well. Uh, I have nothing to say on that. I think that was the, the most intelligent thing for them to do. And to put this movement on this watch. I just a quick wind it and that's it. It, it starts going. And, and, you know, uh, I know that they, nowadays, they have uh, done several versions of their models. This is still the version one of the Nerate in terms of the case. And they have done the version two and the version three. And I think they just come out with the version four. I don't really know if they have improved. But probably they have improved over the time. Uh, I'm sure they have learned from the mistakes of the past. Here, there was a, a big mistake. <laughs> I will show you to you later. Uh, uh, but uh, overall, the, the watch is not bad. Uh, the links, this is a standard push up, pushing pins. Uh, but I'm going to show you now what the, the biggest mistake is uh, in the watch. Hi guys, again, and here it goes. The biggest mistake, it's actually the Luminova. And, and you will probably ask me why. I, I think it's pretty clear. You have a strong Luminova on the hands, on the GMT, on the seconds. But then you not only have a very weak Luminova paste on the hour markers, but the paste is not homogeneous. The paste, uh, you know, it has several mistakes on it. Uh, you can actually not see it pretty well uh, on, this, on this shot with the cell phone, but if you go with a, with a magnifying lens, which I have, uh, the mistakes become quite apparent and quite uh, clear. Okay, guys, so back to the watch. So there you have it. Uh, this is the Meccanica Veneziana, Veneziane produced Nere GMT for uh, 2019. Uh, I understand that they had some difficulties and I can understand that a micro brand will suffer from some problems. 
Uh, nowadays, they are doing new models. I would be very curious to have one of those to see how they have improved, if they have improved at all uh, in the quality overall. Uh, the prices are not cheap. I paid for this one around 700, uh, 700 euros at the time. Uh, and it was a pre-launch Kickstarter. I know they were going to sell it like for over 1,000 euros. And uh, the watches that they're selling today, even if they are having a at, in, at this point, uh, I think there are Chinese or Japanese movements inside, so they are much cheaper than the Swiss made. Uh, the prices are still around 500, 600 euros. So maybe they have improved a lot on the quality. Uh, and, you know, I don't know where they have in this particular uh, watch produced the dial. Uh, maybe, I don't know, in another factory, but definitely it's not the same one that produced the hands. This is as much as I can tell. So anyway, this is my, my, my personal opinion on the Meccaniche Veneziane and I hope it's helpful for all of you. See you next time. Bye bye.